This is a 14 by 17 inch sheet, um, a painting, uh, basically improvisation, playing with a limited palette, mark making, kind of playing with um, squares and rectangles, um, basically uh, things that happen along a grid. And I'm going to um, fold it and make it into a visual book and see what happens when it becomes separate pages. The first thing I'm going to do is fold it in half along one side. It doesn't, it doesn't matter whether I do the 14 or the 17 inch side and really crease the fold down so that it's um, very, very distinct. I'm going to turn it around and fold it in half in the other direction. Again, creasing it down. I'm just using the handle of a palette knife to get the crease uh, nice and crisp. And then the next step is to fold the next edge to the center. And what I'm doing there is I'm just kind of using the, the, the center fold that I just did to really get it lined up straight. So it's half and then half again. And I'm going to also do this coming from the other side. I'm going to try and get these edges as, as close as I can to being uh, right on the halfway mark. This will make the, the book easier to fold and, and put together. Getting that crease down with the um, handle of the palette knife, and then I turn the paper around and do the same from the other edge. Once again, taking it at the edge, folding it to the center, fold, and getting it creased down. Um, there are collage pieces on in this this painting. Um, because it's very improvisational. So sometimes it's uh, a little harder to get a good crease when you've got uh, thicker areas because there's collage glued onto the paper. And then the other edge also needs to be folded to center. So it's basically folding each side in half and then halves again. This will give you a 16 page book. Four, four panels in both directions. Next, I'm going to mark where I'm going to cut the pages so that they will be separated and I can fold them into a book. I start at one edge and count three pages, three squares in, and then on the opposite side of the paper I mark where I'm going to start the cut and there you see me putting a dot where the cut will end and starting again on the other side of the, the paper I start at the other edge I count in three squares, one, two, three, and put in another dot so that the edges alternate. One edge on one side, then in the middle it's a, the opposite edge, and then we go back to the other side for the, for the third cut. Count three squares in from the edge each time. 
This is important because you don't want to completely cut the piece of paper um, so that all the rows are separate. They still have to all be attached. So the arrows show where the cut starts and the dots show where the cut ends. And notice that the arrows are um, alternating. They one side, then the other side, and then back to the first side. So this is the first cut that I'm making from the edge, three squares in. And then I'll turn the paper around. And do the next cut. Lining it up along that fold and starting with the arrow on the edge. I'm really trying to stay right on the fold there. So I might even be cutting through a piece of collage paper on the other, other side. And then the last one, once again, starting with the arrow and going three squares in. There are the three cuts. So you end up with kind of a, a snake or a meander. Now you can turn the page around and see where the, the cuts are. And now the book is ready to fold. So you fold it paint side to paint side, white side to white side, turning it under, and then again paint to paint, white to white, paint to paint, backs always together, and paint sides always together. That's where you turn it under to the next row, paint side to paint side, and back to back. That last one is the front, which will eventually be glued to the cover. And here is what the sequence looks like. So it's interesting because the large sheet breaks down into more concentrated compositions where the shapes are larger compared to the format. And it's always very interesting to see what, what turns out. The first page here will be glued to the cover of the book, but the next two pages will be glued back to back to each other, and then the next fold opens in the opposite direction, and those pages will be glued together, opening again. And these two will be glued back to back, always the white to the white. This will make it so that the book opens like a book that reads um, in the normal direction. opening on the right. And the last page there, that will be glued to the back cover. 
here's a finished book with the pages glued glued together so that they open in two page spreads and the last page is glued to the cover the back cover Next, I'm going to glue the pages. Notice that on the far right there is the, the front of the, the first page of the book. That is going to be glued to the front cover. So what I'm gluing here is going to be the, the next spread. I've also got wax paper underneath um, so that I don't get glue on the, the pages underneath. So on the, now you see on the left there, that's the, the, the page that's going to be glued to the inside of the front cover, and that's just hanging loose. That's going to wait and be glued later on. So next the book opens up in the different direction. I'm going to put um, some wax paper underneath the gluing surface again, just so that I don't get glue on the pages underneath. And each time I'm I'm pressing it pressing it down to um, make sure that um, it doesn't bubble up or or um, come unglued. Holding it back down. And so I continue on through the rest of the book, gluing the, the pages back to back. I've been using Mod Podge in order to glue the pages and also to glue the, the covers to the book block in the next step. After I get the pages glued, I usually put the book block underneath a heavy book and leave it overnight to flatten out and uh, make sure everything is, the glue is sealed. I have selected a paper printed in ochre ink from a collagraph plate for the covers of this book and a section from a painting start for the spine because the colors and textures correspond to areas of color and marks on the pages of the book. I've cut two pieces of mat board to use for the covers of the, the first book. And they are cut so that they, um, so that there's about an eighth of an inch larger than the, the book block itself. Um, this book I folded a little bit unevenly. I was very concerned about staying on camera. So I've, I've increased that. And you can go bigger if you like. I mean, it can be a quarter of an inch all around. It depends on the, the look you want. Um, as for the paper that I'm going to make the cover with, I have to make sure that I've got enough because this is going to have to wrap around that to cover the front and then go around to the back to be glued down. I've measured around each cover and, and allowed myself a one half to five inch margin. Uh, sorry, one half inch to five eighths inch margin. 
around each one. One half inch to five eighths inch. And that's about uh, 1.5 centimeters or a little bigger than that. Now I'm just going to cut around. The first thing I'm going to do is mark off, you can see in green, the corners. These are going to be trimmed off so that when I fold these onto the back, the inside of the cover of the book, I'll have mitered corners. Now, I don't go right, I'm not going to trim or mark, put my line right at the corner. I'm going to just pull back a little bit because I would rather have too much that I can trim again later than fall short. Okay, now I'm going to fold the um, turn-ins that will wrap around the, the front cover boards. Again, I'm going to use uh, the handle of my palette knife to um, get that crease nice and tight. And we'll do this on all four sides. And then test, um, test the fit to make sure that it, it uh, wraps around the, the cover board and that all the little mitered corners meet properly um, and don't need any further trimming. So the, this, this procedure is for the front cover and the back cover. So you make two just the same, just like this. So this one, this one will be either the front or the back, and a second one will, will be for the front or the back, because they'll be alike. So the fit looks pretty good. I'm just going to put the book block on there and check the fit there, and it looks like I've got a margin. The the last page and the front pages of the book will be will be glued over that turn in so that the the cover is the cover turn ins are underneath the page not going on top of the page and that's both for the front and the back so now it's ready to glue i'll put the glue on that surface and glue it to the the board and then I'll glue the turn-ins onto the board as well. So once again, I'm going to use Mod Podge and put the glue in the in the center there. I'll 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 put glue on the the turn-ins after I get this the um, book board placed and glued down, flattened down. Make sure there's no no bubbles in there, and then um, I'll turn it around and do the turn-ins. It looks like the miters are going to fit the mitered corners so that there's no, no trimming. 
if they needed to be trimmed, it's better to do that before putting the book board on anyway. So both the front and back covers will be made this way. It's important to get everything really tight down because the back page or the front page, whichever, is going to be glued over the turn-in. So um, it's good not to have them um, coming up. And that's where the, the front or the back page will fit, depending on which direction you're going to do the book in. So here are the two covers, front and back. Just I just chose them because I, I like this one for the front. This is the book and um, uh, it's been glued so that it turns in, in, in pages and creates spreads. And then this is the piece of paper that I'm going to use to create a, a, a spine. So this is the outside of the cover. Here's the inside, and so the front will be glued to this surface, and the back will be glued to this surface. And usually you have to kind of adjust the space back here and um, make sure that the book can open full. Um, once it's glued, so sometimes it, it's a good idea just to leave a little bit of space, but that's something to play around with because it can it can vary depending on the papers that you used and and um, the thickness of the book. I'm ready to attach the back cover, and I've got a ruler um, taped down here so that I can keep uh, the out, outer covers aligned. This is important with this book because my last fold was askew, and this back page isn't going to mount really quite as straight as I would like. Um, but I'm going to go through with this book anyway and 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 get all the covers made because it will be a fun book to go back into and add collage and play around with the spreads with more paint and, and mark making. So once again, I'm going to put wax paper underneath the page that I'm gluing so that I don't get glue on the other pages. And I'm going to glue this onto the inside of the back cover. I'm gonna try and keep everything straight here. This is sometimes a stage where I find where I have to kind of um, play around with it so that I get the book to, um, because I want it to be able to, if I can, I want it to be able to open fully. Okay, line this up, and then and there are always little adjustments that you can make. But basically, I want to make sure, like this, that the even if the back page is a bit askew. I want the whole cover on this one to line up. So that should do it. And uh, let me just now see it's not going to line up. Um, but that's okay because it will give me something. This book will give me something to play with. 
need more additions. Because that's the thing, you can go back in and add to some of these pages and have fun with it. So the next step will be to decide, let's see, yeah. so this will be the spine. It opens this way. This side is the spine. So I'm going to figure out um, what parts of this page I want to use, how much, how deep I want it to go in, and wrap around the back. I want to size this, you know, I'll fold and cut and then mount it on the spine. So this is the piece that I've um, cut to size because I want it. I want to use it for the spine, and I'm going to um, fold the edges so that I get a neater um, edge once I glue it down. And I'm going to fold. I've, I've pre-folded this to size. Um, so that it fits and gives it a nice neat edge. There are there are many ways to do a spine. This is probably um, a really basic, easy way to do it without having, um, because you can also do spines where you fold it under. But this one is just a very simple one. It gets the job done for a simple book to start off with. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of glue on these folds, and then I'm going to mount it on the book. Okay, and I'm going, now I'm going to glue the back. This is a real basic spine. Very, very simple, and it just it helps to indicate which way the which is the front of the book and which is the back. Um, which way the book is intended to be opened. You can also leave an open spine, in which case, um, if you do that, you can open the book. Um, and pull it out so that you can see all the spreads at once. Okay. Um, I usually put the, um, a book on these, a heavy book on it overnight and let it flatten out and, and everything, but that's um, basically the last step. And again, this was a very simple book um, done with Payne's gray, ochre, black, white, and different crayons and pencils. So I'm thinking about going back into some of these spreads and just playing around with them. This second book is going to have 12 pages rather than 16 like the previous example. I used a 14 by 17 inch sheet uh, of paper, but with all these books, any size can be used as long as the folding and cutting is right. I pre-folded this because it has a fair amount of collage, but here's the sequence. Fold it in half along the long side in this case, and then each edge back to the center.
and now the other side folded to the center. So this is going to create four even folds along the length of the paper. Now I'll turn it over because I need to do some measuring. So here are the folds, the first set of folds uh, that were done folding the paper in half and then each edge to the center again. So there's three folds there. Right now I'm going to measure up for the opposite edge is going to be folded in thirds. So the, the, this side of my paper was 14 inches, which means that from each end I need to measure up 4 and 5 eighths inches, just a little bit more than that. And I'm going to draw a line so that I, I can fold, um, fold in the right place. And this will um, divide along that edge into thirds. So there'll be two lines there where I will do my folding. So one side across will have four squares. The other edge will, will be three squares. And that will create a 12-page book instead of a 16-page book. It means that this book will be um, even though it's, I use the same size paper, it will be a, a slightly larger book. So this is the one-third fold. And just using the palette knife again to, to get the fold really down neatly. This piece had a lot of collage on it, so I have, I'm trying to make sure that I get it, the folds really crisp. And there we are, four one way, three the other. So this time there are only going to be two cuts. I'll mark one edge and count up three squares. And then on the opposite edge, I'm going to mark where my scissor cut is going to start. And again, three squares and make a dot and that's where my cutting will, will happen. It will start at the edge where the arrow is and will go to the dot three squares in. And now on the other edge of the paper where I've put that uh, arrow and once again cutting from the edge squ three squares in. So turning the paper over and starting the fold from either edge, paint side to paint side, back to back.
when you get to the end of the row, it turns under and continues back to back and paint side to paint side. So that's the page that goes to the front cover and the spreads, which can be glued as before, like the first book, or left unglued to create an open spine book. This collagraph that has a sort of a rainbow roll of greens and purples and lavenders has a lot of colors in it, which are contained within the, the, the book. And I also have more of this envelope inside paper that I used for collage. So these are the papers that I will use for the, for the covers, front, and back. This book is going to have an open spine so that it can be stretched out. Um, so here's the front cover. This is the back cover. And First thing I'm going to do is glue this to the front cover on the inside and I'm just, when I'm gluing it, I'm going to make sure that I have an even margin as possible, as even a margin as possible all around it. So I'll apply the glue to the actual paper, the front of the book block. I'm putting wax paper under here in case I um, uh, overshoot with the, the glue onto the, I don't want it to get on the other pages. that wax paper away. And I'm going to line up the fold here with very close to the very edge. I'll make sure that I've got that both top and bottom. It's lined up down here. Yep, that looks pretty good. Okay. It's always good to kind of look at it from different angles. Um, I think I've got it. And I'm going to press it down. Sometimes it's nice to use the wax paper because they can see what I'm doing. Do the wax, get the edge down. Um, I always weigh these down overnight after gluing because that really flattens it out and secures the glue bond. because things may want to curl up for, for a little while, but there we go. Okay, so that's the front cover on. And now the back cover will go like this. And I'll make sure that they line up.
Okay, I'm going to slip a piece of wax paper here. It's a little trickier sometimes doing the second one because the second cover, whether it's back or front, whichever one is done second, um, because you will want them to match up. And so, as soon as I do this, I'm going to check it. Some of these books that I do with the collage, the folding, um, they have some discrepancies. If there's a collage piece that happens along a fold. I'm just going to remove this. Now this will need to, to flatten out overnight. Just to go through it quickly, front cover, there's the back. So here's the sequence. But this book has an open spine, so it can be pulled out. A book with an open spine doesn't need to have the pages glued, but I've chosen to glue pages, the backs of pages four to five and eight to nine so that I get three kind of double double page spreads of four panels each and then the book can move to a second group of four panels making the 12 pages all together but the book can open all the way as well Still, what, what can be nice is to kind of make a faux binding um, with a strip of, of paper on this side to indicate that the book opens from this direction. So I am going to choose, um, this was a, the, a, some collage paper and I have more of it. It's actually the inside of an envelope, and I've been playing around um, painting it with copper, some copper paint or some purple violet paint that I used here um, to uh, see how it will look if there's just a small strip on this side to indicate that that is the binding side and the book opens this way. I cut from the envelope that I had used for collage material, and I painted it with some of the purple and copper that had also been used within the book. And I'm going to use these pieces to make a kind, the kind of faux spine that will leave, leave the actual spine open, but just give an indication of which side the book opens from. So this is um, the strip as, it, uh, as I've cut it out. And it's just a question of folding the edges in and um, deciding. That's just a decision about how thick you want the, um, the um, spine to be. It can be thicker or you can make one thinner like that, just depending on what kind of look you want. Sometimes I do one one way and the back the other way just just to uh, have some fun with it. They don't have to be all the same. Um, and then uh, measuring 
how long you need you need it to be and folding here and just trimming it so that you have it folded under. Um, what I like to do is once I have it folded and sized, I like to fold the ends in so that they are enclosed and don't have any edges sticking out. Once I glue them onto the book. So I made the front of the book with a, a broader um, faux spine. This is the, the back. So the spine is open and the book opens from this direction. Another way to do the spine, which was on one of the Magic Garden books that I showed in the last video, is to put the faux spine, see this book, this book is also open and can open like this, can open out, um, is to glue this on, the, the spine, and fold it over, then attach your first page and do the same at the back. So the spine is the same strip, but you're folding it over, gluing it down, and then gluing your last page as well. And that makes a different kind of finish. It's kind of nice. I, you can fold it over that way. With the one I just did, I wanted to leave it um, just on the outside because I liked having this border around the, the pages on the front and the back without the interruption of another color. But there are many ways to do it and it's fun to experiment.